Your host for today, uh, Nishant Suri, he happens to be the hospitality training manager at HTMI, Hotel and Tourism Management Institute, Singapore. He completed his BSc in hospitality from HTMI and, uh, and an MSc in hospitality and tourism management from Napier University. Nishant has a rich experience of working in the hospitality industry in locations like Switzerland, Dubai, and Singapore. Nishant is known for many valuable skills, including maximizing room revenue, cross-selling, and upselling, strengthening and ma maintaining customer relationships, situational analysis, coaching, multicultural team building, cross-cultural research analysis, and academial research writing. So with that, I'd like to hand over the mic to Nishant. Nishant, take over. Thank you so much. That's a very, very humble uh, introduction. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, a very good afternoon and good morning to various members of the world, or wherever you may be connecting from. Um, I would just uh, like to go about firstly, like saying that a very warm welcome to HTMI. And also I will be really honored to be presenting this morning to you for about the career development for gen the various generations that are here uh, amongst us during this presentation uh, and how its effects have on hospitality and tourism. So uh, without further ado, I'll be going further with the presentation itself. We'll be going through a little bit of a journey as to understand of how uh, the, uh, the hospitality escape has an opportunity for us all. Now, uh, for this purpose, we have to understand and analyze the role of Generation Z in the hospitality as, and tourism as in the employment pool itself because it's quite a diverse and it's quite a very, I would say, you know, a lot of opportunities that all students have and all individuals have in the, uh, in the hospitality field, because most of the uh, skills that you learn are transferable. And in order for us to reach to the same, we'll be going through the uh, importance of education and specialization to bridge that professional gap. Uh, that uh, can be found at certain times in the hospitality field as we experience if we go to a restaurant or if we go to a hotel, that's customer service delivery is not 100% from the side of the uh, customer server. And also for moving forward, we'll be going through and also to fulfill that uh, gap, how the industrial practices are there to maintain that career development for the talented professionals that are willing to join it, be it from generation Z, X or Y. Um, now, hospitality and tourism, firstly, it came in prominence quite a, not so long ago, actually. And it, the, it was during this time of globalization that uh, the world stepped into, uh, where everybody was open to businesses, everybody was open to leisure, uh, families became more divided, and it allowed people to travel. And for many other reasons, such as self-discovery, just to be able to explore certain parts of the world. Now, of course, several other reasons being medication, religion, and that's why, like, even if you see, like, you know, places like Italy, they become a major part of tourism because, of course, Vatican City is located very, pretty much in Rome. So for that particular purpose, there has been a lot of movement. I mean, of course, India being a very large market for that matter, where businesses are international, where leisure is a key of major force for hospitality and tourism to develop it's very the country is very family centric and of course people the younger generation is very involved in the self-discovery whereas the older generation they want to incline towards religion and medication right because medicine tourism as we are very well aware is quite popular for foreigners to go into india especially in kerala where uh, medication is very well, it's considered very, uh, firstly, Ayurvedic, right, and natural, right? So there's a lot of uh, economic practices that come in with this entire hospitality and tourism, uh, tourism industry itself, right? Now, of course, it becomes a key driver to the economy because it creates over 100 million jobs. So even for the purpose of uh, not only just saying that, okay, like, you know, is a person who is working at the counter of McDonald's, is he... In, uh, working in a uh, hospitality and tourism industry definitely yes that person is because it is creating a job and also for, all to the point to the minister of hospitality and tourism for that matter or the ministry of tourism well all parts of the world are a part of tourism and 
Of course, these are more individuals who are experienced and more, I would say, you know, belonging to certain generations. Now, with so many creation of job opportunities, which are over 100 million, they also contribute, these jobs contribute to the economy also, monetary wise, because the whole idea is that it means to sustain not only the people, but also the industry itself, right? Now, the previous generations, of course, where we belong, majority of the, the individuals as the younger self of yourself is the Generation Z. Whereas for us, we are more Generation X and Y. We're the people who are exiting the industry because we have already had that experience in the hospitality industry. But at the same time, the Generation G, Z has a lot of capability and it has a lot more potential to be better prepared because the time when Generation X and Y was around, the education field or that professional gap was not fulfilled. And that's the reason why when we go to several restaurants and we go to several places of dining, service is sometimes just not up to par. And that is particularly because they were just not prepared well. Yes, they were trained on the job, but at the same time, all of this is better. The younger talent is better prepared, which is a Generation Z, because this has now become a mainstream field. It wasn't considered a mainstream back then, but now, way more. And when it comes to various places where one can apply themselves in the hospitality and tourism field, there are many. Because hospitality and tourism, the general thinking is that, okay, yeah, you're working in Firstly, facing the customer directly, not always maybe the case because there are many departments such as sales and marketing, finance, human resources, learning and development, quality assurance, public relations, hygiene, all of these departments and all of these subsectors in the hospitality industry, they offer not only just jobs, but also offer that specialization. So let's say for example, I mean, I did work in sales and marketing for a brief period of time when I was working in Dubai. And the whole idea is that during my tenure that I served there, which I mean, wasn't brief, I would say it was about from 2015 until 2018. So during that period, the whole experience that I had was front office, which is more operations and customer service oriented. But with the time that I spent in the hospitality industry, I was given the choice of where I would like to specialize in. And that opens up a large plethora of opportunities for not only just people who are belonging to different generations, but also to the future generations because people want to expand. People have that tendency, be it from any generation, to move forward. And be it the case of COVID or not, that departmentalization and that idea of the industry to sustain itself is always going to be there. So hospitality is like a cat where it always lands on its feet, making sure that the major contribution is there to sustain the economy. Because even now, uh, if there is no hotel or no bar or no restaurant, there is going to be such a panic because some people they are dependent on these fa uh, on these establishments for firstly not only because of travel but also because people like to experience different things you cannot be having the same thing over and over again yes you may be a very home chef at your own house but at the same time people would like to experience different things try to break the cycle so to say right so in the hospitality and tourism field, there are sectors which include lodging, dining, events, aviation, and entrepreneurship. Now, you may say that, okay, why is aviation a part of tourism? Or, well, technically it is because aviation, it may be a field when it comes to flying, but at the same time, there is ground staff, there's onboard staff, onboard staff being the personnel who are serving you, air stewards, stewardesses which is quite a popular uh, field where many of the individuals were or still are very interested to work in, right? Emirates being a very key example. Now, in terms of how entrepreneurship comes in, now, anybody who owns a hotel or anybody who owns a restaurant, their main motive is not only just to get profit, but to generate a brand image, right? And the whole idea is 
to actually have that connection with the people. And that connection with the people comes through actually being still customer service oriented. And that's where hospitality and tourism completely puts the entire picture in a bigger bigger scale, right? We Hospitality and tourism industry as a term in itself, it attracts a lot of people, be it older or younger, and it employs a lot of people at the same time, even at this point where COVID is still being hit. And you may say that, okay, I'm going on in circles in terms of like, you know, okay, what? but what exactly is the point of this, right? Now, the possibilities of you succeeding in the hospitality industry is limitless because you can start, right? You can start from one point. You can start from the point of you being as a front office agent. You would always end up with the opportunity being dependent on where your interest lies, firstly. Secondly, where you want to see yourself develop and what you want to achieve, right? And this whole idea of these soft skills being transferable, right? Be it HR, be it finance, because you will still be customer oriented and you would like to complete a task in the right way, right? And that's the whole idea. This transferability of skills allows you to be part of various operations. Now, the relation of hospitality and tourism with education, right? Now, in terms of the industry, be it Marriott, be it Hilton, be it Hyatt for that matter, the industry requires employees that are educated in the tourism industry and of course are having a certain knowledge to be able to operate efficiently without having to rework things, right? Therefore, what educational institutes are doing, they're collaborating with the industry to address this problem. That's the reason why to actually have that two pool of talent that are available, pool of talent now being the next coming generation, which is generation Z, right? To have them better prepared is the reason why there is a major boost in management training programs that are being developed by the hotel companies themselves, such as Marriott. Marriott has their uh, Voyager program. Hilton has their elevator program. And these are all fast track programs for you to become a specialist in your sector where you want to see yourself develop and you want to actually gain on with the trend of the hospitality industry, right? So the whole practical approach for this talent management, uh, it's not only just to be you know, on track of seeing like, okay, this is what the trend is, but also it is to meet the customer's expectations and to actually have a consistent learning plan, not only just for the people who are uh, participating, but also for the people who are involved from various parts of the hospitality industry, right? Now, to prepare and retaining young talent, right? Now, it's focused towards not only just job functionality, because yes, there is a major key because you're being honed for that particular field, right? Let's say you become a management trainee specialist in FMB, for example. Now, FMB, you'll be trained from everything. So be it how to serve a cocktail or how to bartend or how to be a proper barista, but also you will be able to get the idea of how to have proper plating, right? So now that is giving you specialization of your job functionality. Then providing a healthy career trajectory because the tr this whole idea is to provide you not just a flat career uh, development scope, but a steep career development scope. Um, the ability to travel during work, and to provide a mobile lifestyle, because that's the whole idea right now, right? Many of the management are working from home because of the situation, which is basically saying that, okay, yes, they had to go through certain steps, but in terms of their sustainability, they're still employed. And that's the whole idea. You see yourself begin from one step in the hospitality industry, and then the next steps will follow depends on where you keep the step at the right time, right? And that's more of a personal uh, judgment when it comes to it. But there is a clear uh, guideline that is available to you, right? Now, 
And the next point is engaging talents with emerging service systems and skills. Now, not a long time ago, there was no IT department in the hotel industry. IT skills were not really something that were required. I'm talking about, well, I'm saying not long ago, but like I'm talking about something which is around about 1990s, early 1990s. IT department was not something which was really needed. But with emergence of time, the IT department has become a major stakeholder in the hospitality industry because many of the systems are online and many of the systems are requiring certain uh, equipments which require specialization. And therefore, IT industry in general has been connected to the hospitality industry. Now, there are also what hotel companies do. They organize open days. They organize these open days specifically for people who are interested in the hospitality industry to see how the hotel works. And that's where, like, you know, many, even our students here in HDMI, we bring students outside. Of course, there are certain restrictions that we can't bring them outside to right now. But at the same time, we bring students outside to bring them to the hotels for them to see as to how everything works in the back of house, right? Now, this is applying fairness to the system for the work environment because the whole idea is that everybody should know in and out, right? Yes, I actually asked in one of my polls when I was doing the, uh, when I was doing the handling the booth, that what does everybody think about the hospitality industry? Is it flamboyant? Is it fancy? Is it hardworking? Everybody, 75% of the people said it's hardworking, but it's a very sustainable hard work where you need to start from one point, but then things do become much more smoother and you do get to achieve to the point where you would like to. And that's where your career ladder becomes much smoother and more transparent for the for your career in hospitality industry itself. So uh, their pay scale is very transparent. They're, what you see on your contracts or what you see as per the agenda of what you have signed up for, you will get, right? If there are incentives, you will, you will be entitled to them accordingly. And there is always the idea of having mentorship, right? Now, the whole idea is, let's say, for example, in a married hotel, you join as a new employee, as a front desk agent, there is somebody who is going to train you. They will take the time. They will take, even though you have learned everything from the start in your educational background, but they are going to see, firstly, assess how much do you know, right? Because in the educational environment, you will be, you will be taught as per what you require, as per the industrial standard. But at the same time, every hotel company is different and they require their own personalization steps required for making things more well customer oriented and delivering things more effectively and efficiently. So there could be different systems that can be used and therefore that mentorship program is used for employees. Uh, sharing achievements to encourage recognition. Now, in terms of having any kind of, you know, there are many ways for motivating these staff members because the whole idea is firstly to see like were you able to follow the, all the steps right this is something which i'm sharing of my personal experience way back when i was a trainee at the front office uh there were awards that were given out on a monthly basis as to yeah this is the champion of check-in this is the champion for checkouts this is the fastest uh, enroller this is the highest upseller the whole idea is that celebration or encouraging your uh, your performance, it really does matter. And the whole idea for young talents or for that matter, Generation Z is to be seeking out for that recognition for or for that matter, the endorphin uh, rush, as we call it, right? Uh, the whole idea for Generation Z is to be recognized. And we many hotel companies do understand that. They do cater to your ego for that matter. And all these steps are there, not only just to prepare you, but to retain you, right? And to hone you as a homegrown talent, right? And lastly, to provide organizational support through prior employer to, uh, sorry, providing organizational support prior to employment because this requires, and as, for hotel companies, they do understand that we, as Generation C, require certain guidance. The same with Generation Y, the same with Generation X. Because the people who are exiting now, these are the baby boomers, even before Generation X. 
they are working either as high uh, upper level management leaders, right? And they're more closer to the age of retirement. That means the next generation, the generation X, are open for that next step to grow forward. The generation Y, the next step. The generation Z, entry and to the next step, right? So there is a lot of scope for not only just fast growth, but consistent growth. In conclusion, uh, the hospitality and tourism industry will thrive it, as it is a necessity for businesses and for human curiosity to bring motivation within travelers. Uh, the generation, the current generation, or for that matter, the younger generation, is having the better opportunity to be trained and developed effectively and through different methods, be it culinary, be it through management, be it through uh, health uh, and the nutrition, there are many skills and many, many specialization uh, areas which is allowing you to hone yourself, right? As per the expectation of the industry itself. And with time, the industry itself has evolved and it understands the desire of the upcoming generations. So the uh, all hotel companies for that matter are very well aware as to what is it that you would require in seeing yourself grow and in being, you know, successful in the hospitality industry. I hope this was very useful for you, but at the same time, I would like to ask if there are any questions and I'll be happy to take a few. So the first question from Hitanshi, I wanted to know, should I opt for matters in hospitality management and diploma? Oh, good. Definitely, yes. Because the whole idea is for you to be able to be, you know, a specialist in the hospitality industry, you would require definitely a diploma or any kind of specialization education to be there. Um, to pursue my master's in India or abroad, can you help me out? Uh, well, Jagat, for your question, I would say that yes, uh, you should pursue a master's only once you have got an idea of where exactly you want to pursue the master's, uh, which, which area you would like to specialize in. Because if you choose master's in hospitality and you don't want to specialize in, master, in hospitality for your future, that is something that will leave you hanging, right? Uh, it's one thing that we perceive, we perceive that masters is going to get you a better chance of employment, but at the same time, you have to be very fair to yourself because the whole idea is that you should be able to see a career path developed for yourself and hospitality will give you that. So, and personally, I would say yes, abroad is a better option to pursue your, uh, masters. Uh, Puneet, for your uh, question as to the pandemic and the hospitality industry has affected everyone and this course can help. Yes, the whole idea is that because, uh, I mean, if I'm talking about HTMI, right, the whole idea is that uh, we are offering career opportunities after you finish your education. So uh, that is something which is available to you. Right? Mania, uh, complete my graduation English honors. I want to become a chef. Uh, you should go for a postgraduate diploma uh, in culinary arts. That is something which I can recommend for you. Uh, uh, Mohammed, for your question, uh, the second batch of 2021 is going to start much later for us. And actually, I'll, we can head over to our booth and I can give you more uh, answers about what, what batch will be best for you. Uh, but yeah, that is basically 
what I have so far for the queries. Um, yes. Uh, are there any questions that you would have in terms of uh, the presentation itself, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Bhargav, uh, you, which country would you prefer for tourism? Um, well, if you're asking in terms of education or you're asking in terms of traveling, <laughs> because that's a very open question. If you can be a bit more specific, please. All right. So, Hale, you're graduating in 2021 for engineering and you want to have good options in hospitality. Uh, we do not offer any cabin crew uh, courses, but uh, we do offer management courses. So that is something that we can find, give more information once you head back to our uh, booth, please. So, hey. No, there will be no hindrance, Mania. Uh, the whole idea is that the postgraduate diploma, it serves as a postgraduate you know, step forward. It's kind of like a degree itself, so there, there will be no hindrance in your in your in your career. Well, for uh, there's a lot of questions about preference for masters in culinary. Well, there, to be quite honest, if anybody is interested in culinary, it is more important that you firstly get the hands-on skill. Right, uh, this is something that uh, Manya here has been asking. Uh, for basically what exactly they would like to do for you know, moving forward. So I would say that in order for you to develop your uh, your career skills, right? The whole idea is firstly to um, to actually have a postgraduate diploma course uh, in hand in order for you to move forward to the masters. Yeah. Uh, well, Switzerland, I would say, Jagat. That is to answer your question. Uh, uh, Chirag, uh, I would say that in this case, of course, again, Switzerland will be a very good option because it's the same course that uh, I have done. Um, the average fee structure uh, is 32,500 Swiss francs. And uh, yeah, that's the average fee structure that uh, in general that uh, many hotel schools will provide. So. Barga, for you, the same Switzerland. That's the same answer that I'll give you as well. That's absolutely fine, Paragraph, no problem. Uh, Mohammed, if you can uh, direct your questions for more details about your query in the booth, that'll be more appreciated, please. All right. So, uh, All uh, right, Russell, uh, I think, I think everybody is having questions more about the course itself. Um, so yeah. Uh, Jagat, in terms of uh, Canada or Germany, of course, I mean, there are also tourism destinations but you're talking about uh, scope for career development, I would personally, I would say Switzerland is the best option to go forward. Yes, Nishant. I think everybody yeah. has questions. Do you have, I think you have one more or have you addressed it from Sohel? 
Uh, I think I have addressed most of the questions because they're more uh, related to queries regarding to uh, culinary institutes and, you know, more about, right. <laughs> it's more about institutional questions now. So, uh, so if it is institution based uh, questions, I think uh, it'll be better for them to head over to your booth. What do you say, uh, Nishant? Yes, definitely. Yes, that will be Excellent. more uh, appropriate as well. Because I mean, the whole idea for this presentation was to get them an overview of that, you know, like it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, the whole oh, idea. Exactly. And uh, you, you did a great job in, uh, you know, elucidating the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the way in the way in which they will be able to uh, you know progress through the career ladder and uh, as you said you know it's it's not all about you know the uh, the current situation but the hospitality industry always finds a way to bounce back oh, and that's oh, what um, you know every every student who is interested in pursuing a career in hospitality should keep that in mind and uh, you did that really well thank you so much uh, it my was pleasure. a great session, Nishant. My, my pleasure, uh, Russell. And to just to close off, actually, uh, for the students who are who are actually here, uh, I mean, just as long as everybody is, or anybody for that matter, is curious in the hospitality industry and is truly passionate to pursue something in the hospitality industry, uh, one should really just step forward and just be able to, you know take that risk because the more you think the more you'll stagnate your own career growth because the whole idea is that you start from somewhere and then you think about your your job opportunities or your pay scale or uh about because like the, the reason why i chose generation z is because like generation y right we as generation y we like to ask always the question why right and for generation z everybody likes to ask the question how like, how do I get to be a millionaire, for example, right? Because the whole idea is that everybody is wanting to desire something which is unattainable, but you need to start somewhere. You need to start at a certain point, not overthinking the process of, okay, which is the best institute, which is the best country, which is the best ranked institute, which is not the best ranked institute, which is the which is the knife that I should be using in, uh, in culinary arts just for me to carve a, a fish, you're overthinking it. The moment you move forward, the moment you take that step into into specialization of something, things will fall into place. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you've covered it well, Nishant. Great. Great. Yeah. Uh, Jagat wants to have your contact details. Jagat, if you would like, uh, I, I think uh, Mr. Nishant will be able to share that with you in his booth. Or Nishant, if you want, you can share it here as well so that all the viewers can see sure. the details. I will just share it here. So it's my email address at stmi.sg or john.suri at htmi.ch. Yeah. Alternatively, you can add me on LinkedIn. Um, the LinkedIn link is there on my, well, on my profile, but I'll just share it with you anyway here so that, you know, anybody is able to, you know, <laughs> just add me there and ask questions. Perfect. Yeah. If you want, I'll post it uh, for you, Nishant. I've just copied it. Oh, yeah, sure. That'll be great. Yeah, that'll be great. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Russell. All right. Anytime. Great. All right. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for attending. And I'll see you over at the booth. Sure. Thank you so much, Nishant. Take thanks, care. Russell. Take care. Bye-bye.